Hello lovies, it's your girl Grata. That's Grata like Prada, but with a G. Don't forget the L-O-V-E. And if you forget the love, then we gotta talk. Baby, you give me eyes and fire. Giving... Today we are talking about the root of people pleasing, okay? I feel like we talk about being a people pleaser and we talk about how people gotten over on us and we talk about the victim mindset behind people pleasing i'm working on it i'm working on it because my homegirl sinclair always says i participated in blank so at the end of the day don't forget your role in participating therefore when you know better you do better with that said we're getting to the root we're knowing why we started we're knowing where this came from we're knowing who our first encounter was that triggered people pleasing or why our response was to become a people pleaser some people are okay with being the villain and going further into themselves while there are some people like us who choose to people please right now we are focusing on what we can control and what we can control is our knowledge of why we started people pleasing and how we will progress up out of this thing right right so i'm just gonna sift through some of the ideas i came across and then i'm gonna sift through some of my root causes and in turn i hope that it helps you reflect on yours and then find that root and start cutting it at the root through therapy through journaling through meditation, through different practices, through self-care, you know, however you see fit to work through this people-pleasing journey. But first, knowing where it comes from allows you to reject all the places it came from, to dissect all the places it came from. You got this. Let's go. I got my water in hand and my notes on hand. Let's go. First off, I wanna start with some of my notes from research. Um, some of the top three takeaways I got from the Washington Post articles I read, and I read an article on psychology today. I'll link all three of those articles below. They were really helpful. in one, not feeling alone in this journey um, of breaking down where I came from and the societal pressures and things that kind of led me to get to this point. I won't say it's the fault of any one thing because it's a culmination of things that led me to this place. However, I will say that I have to be aware of it in order to break it down. Okay, the first one was parental acceptance. That came up a lot. It came up in regards to specifically women and young girls and how we're taught to be agreeable, to be pretty, to for me, um, being petite was a thing, like just being small, you know, whether it's playing small, whether it's the way you speak, like I find that I'm just now breaking down the way I talk to my elders. For example, right now, I feel like I'm breaking down how I talk to certain elders in my family, like my aunt and my grandmother and, you know, just breaking down the sing song voice. Like, it's like, hey, grandma. Like, I always talk like that. And it's so ingrained in me from my youth. But I'm like, is that my authentic self? And like, I love my grandmother. And I feel like we have such a great, transparent, vulnerable, open relationship. And I feel like I should be able to use my natural tone of voice with her. But a big, like, foundational thing is our parental acceptance it is how they see the clothes that we wear I don't know if you all have seen it but that Toni Morrison video where she's talking about how children notice how you look at them when they come in the room sometimes people's natural inclination is to look at a child's clothes or look at their hair and like automatically correct it or you know say oh you don't look neat or let me fix this when really it makes the child feel like something is wrong with them Instead of saying, oh, you look so pretty. Oh, I just love your hair. Or, oh, I just, you know, I love this outfit you picked out. Basically, first takeaway is parental acceptance and how you were received as a child or how you were criticized as a child. And all of that stuff can play into how you try to work hard to receive acceptance. I think I need to sit all the way down. 
Because I'm taking the blood flow from my legs to do this. Hey friends, so I had to readjust a little bit because I wanted to get comfortable, get good and comfortable to give y'all the rest of this video. <clears throat> so the next takeaway from my research was societal acceptance and it brought up something for me. It made me realize like bullying played a role in this people pleasing journey that I'm working on. Okay. And I'm going to keep calling it a journey. This recovering people pleaser journey I'm on. I thought it was really interesting because, I mean, it makes sense for a child or a teenager or someone to want acceptance from their peers. I feel like we spend a lot of time at school and who wants to be at school and be constantly ostracized. I was just working through that and just thinking through how that played a role and then figuring out how to backtrack from that. And my third takeaway. <laughs> from the research I was looking into was avoiding conflict like wild to me because avoiding conflict seems like um I don't know it seems like something that is so ingrained in me like to some people they don't just avoid conflict like I do I have in the past avoided conflict by any means and when I say conflict I mean in high school, if a fight was happening on one side, I'm going the opposite direction. If a fight was near my class, I was going to the bathroom somewhere else. Like when I was younger, I was in the mall with my parents and a fight or something broke out. People are running towards it. I'm on the other side of the mall and they're looking for me. I'm like, I'm not going closer. So. I've kind of been conflict avoidant since I was very young. If that was a natural habit in my young, young days, then I imagine that people pleasing would happen as a result of avoiding conflict in other ways. So if it became a conflict between two people or somebody I'm in engaging with and there's a conflict, I don't want to deal with that. So I'm going to do what I need to do to get out of it or to avoid it or to appease the person so that there no longer is a conflict. And that has been a fault in many aspects of my life. And I've just been processing all of it. Like this concept of being a recovering people pleaser brought up a lot for me. And I was like, hmm, I understand myself more because I understand how those experiences could have led me here. Like, okay, that makes sense. And it allows me to give myself some grace. You know, I'm going to make sure to reiterate to give yourself grace because there are experiences in life that led you here. There are some things that happened that were probably traumatic that led you to be a person that wanted to avoid conflict, a person that wanted to be accepted, a person that knew what it was like to not be accepted and now will do anything to keep that. You know, it allows you to be patient with yourself going to be a journey you didn't get there overnight and you won't get away from there overnight however it just takes a choice at the very core it really just takes a choice and once you make that choice to recover from it and to practice and to stay in practice of pleasing yourself of going towards your authentic self regardless of other people's responses you will recover. <laughs> I can, I, I guarantee you, you will, you will recover from people pleasing the more you go towards your authentic self until you outgrow those areas of your life where it's a survival mechanism. And then you shift into thriving in life. Like you still have to let go of the things you did in survival. And so I think it's really interesting now to realize people pleasing does not serve where I am now. It does not serve the goals I have for my life now. And so I'm having to recover from it. If I want the vision and the things that I want out of my life, I have to recover from all of that in my past. That's just the, the hard truth. Now I'm just like constantly climbing towards my authentic self just so that I can avoid the pitfalls of trying to fit into somebody's narrow idea 
of me. Because if that's if I just try to fit into people, I'll never really fit into myself. Like, there won't be any room for me if it's filled with everybody else's perception. What about mine? What about me? I hope that you all have received some value from this video. I hope you're able to see yourself in some of the experiences that I mentioned. I hope that you're able to continue your healing journey. I hope that you are able to take these nuggets with you to therapy or to your journal or even to your homegirls where you can talk through it. I hope you have a safe space to talk through it. If not, hit up the comments. <laughs> we got this together. Um, we are recovering people pleasers and it is but a journey. It is a lot of undoing and unlearning to do, but it's a practice. I think I've learned that over time. I've gotten into pockets of time where I was not people pleasing and I was being authentic to myself and then out of practice fell back into the pattern. So let's just keep practicing it. Okay. Just like yoga, just like meditation, it is a practice to put yourself first, to please yourself first and then show up for others. So I hope that you are reminded in this video to do just that. And I'm sending you so much love and I'm so excited for you on this journey. I just want to remind you that the healing that you do is the healing of the collective. Whatever you're healing in yourself, you're healing for the lineage to come. You're healing for the children in your family. You're healing for the next generations, whether it's the generations in your bloodline or those that are just around you to witness your greatness. With that said, keep on healing and I will talk to y'all next time. Peace. Baby, you give me ice and fire. You're giving me wings.